In the late 1940s, bomber design was at a breaking point. Jet engines promised speed, but doctrine had not yet caught up. Militaries struggled to define what a modern bomber should be. Engineers began experimenting with radical layouts and new flight concepts. One aircraft pushed this experimentation further than most. It was fast, unconventional, and deeply misunderstood. This aircraft was not designed to fly high and slow. It was built to strike quickly at low altitude. Its layout defied traditional bomber logic. Pilots found it powerful but demanding. Strategists debated its purpose. The Martin XB-51 emerged as one of the most unusual jet bombers ever built. The XB-51 was developed as a tactical jet bomber concept. The U.S. Army Air Forces wanted a fast aircraft for battlefield strike missions. Existing bombers were too slow and vulnerable. Jet propulsion offered a potential solution. Martin proposed a highly unconventional design. Speed and low-level penetration defined the concept. Design work began in the mid-1940s. Engineers faced limited experience with jet bombers. Aerodynamic data for high-speed, low-altitude flight was scarce. The design emphasized forward speed rather than payload size. Structural strength became a priority. Survivability depended on performance. The aircraft's configuration was immediately unusual. Three jet engines were selected for propulsion. Two were mounted in pods under the forward fuselage. The third engine was placed in the rear fuselage. This layout balanced thrust and center of gravity. It also introduced complexity. Wing design focused on low altitude performance. Moderate sweep angles supported higher speeds. Wing loading was relatively high. This improved penetration but affected handling. Takeoff and landing speeds increased significantly. Runway requirements became demanding. The crew arrangement reflected the aircraft's tactical role. A two-man crew was seated in tandem. Visibility was optimized for attack missions. Bombing systems were simplified. The aircraft emphasized speed over automation. Crew workload was high by design. The first XB-51 flew in 1949. Initial tests showed impressive speed. Handling was responsive at low altitude. However, stability issues appeared at certain flight regimes. Engineers began incremental modifications. The aircraft showed both promise and risk. The XB-51 was optimized for speed rather than range. This maximum speed rivaled early jet fighters. Low-level dash capability was exceptional for a bomber. Payload capacity was limited but sufficient for tactical strikes. The aircraft was never intended for strategic bombing. Mission focus was narrow and specific. Engine performance defined the aircraft's character. The three-engine layout delivered strong acceleration. Throttle response was aggressive. Fuel consumption was extremely high. Endurance suffered as a result. Range limitations became a major concern. Internal bomb bays carried conventional weapons. Nuclear delivery was never a primary role. Bomb release mechanisms were straightforward. Accuracy relied heavily on pilot skill. There was little margin for error. Precision required intensive training. Takeoff and landing were challenging. High wing loading increased approach speeds. Runway length requirements limited operational bases. Braking systems were heavily stressed. Emergency margins were small. Pilot confidence was essential. Handling at low altitude was demanding. Turbulence affected stability. Control inputs required constant attention. Pilots described the aircraft as fast but unforgiving. Fatigue became an operational factor. Missions required intense focus. Despite performance, the design faced criticism. Complexity increased maintenance burden. Logistics support was challenging. Operational flexibility was limited. Competing aircraft offered simpler solutions. 
the XB-51 struggled to justify its niche. Flight testing revealed the aircraft's strengths quickly. Speed exceeded expectations at low altitude. Acceleration was impressive for its time. Pilots appreciated its raw performance. However, stability margins were thin. The aircraft demanded constant control input. Small errors could escalate rapidly at high speed. Testing highlighted structural concerns early in the program. Low-level flight produced extremely high stress loads. Repeated maneuvers accelerated airframe fatigue. Engineers reinforced critical components during testing. Weight increased as a result of these changes. Performance gains were partially offset. Structural limits remained a concern throughout evaluation. Engine reliability became a persistent issue. The three-engine configuration complicated maintenance procedures. Asymmetric thrust presented serious challenges during failures. Emergency procedures were complex and unforgiving. Pilots trained extensively for engine-out scenarios. Even with training, risk remained high. Redundancy did not guarantee safety. Operational testing questioned overall mission practicality. Range limitations reduced tactical flexibility. Payload capacity was smaller than initially hoped. Competing aircraft offered better balance across roles. Tactical doctrine continued to evolve rapidly. The XB-51's mission profile became less attractive. Evaluators struggled to justify its niche. Training demands proved significant. Transitioning pilots required extensive flight hours. Simulator support was limited at the time. Emergency handling dominated training syllabi. Attrition rates concerned program leadership. Safety margins were considered narrow. Instructor pilots raised repeated warnings. Only two prototypes were constructed. One was lost in a fatal crash during testing. This accident intensified scrutiny of the entire program. Confidence in the design declined rapidly. Risk tolerance was lower in the post-war environment. Political support weakened further. Momentum began to fade. Despite setbacks, test data remained valuable. Engineers gained insight into low-level jet operations. Lessons influenced later aircraft designs indirectly. Failures proved as educational as successes. The XB-51 contributed knowledge beyond its airframe. Its impact extended beyond cancellation. Experimental programs often leave such legacies. Strategic priorities shifted rapidly in the early 1950s. Nuclear delivery became central to bomber planning. Tactical jet bombers lost institutional emphasis. The XB-51 did not align with emerging doctrine. Its design philosophy aged quickly. Context changed faster than development cycles. This mismatch proved decisive. Competing aircraft offered greater balance. The English Electric Canberra gained increasing favor. It provided longer range and greater payload flexibility. Simpler systems reduced maintenance burden significantly. Operational costs were lower overall. Decision makers favored practicality over raw speed. Procurement trends reflected this shift. Logistical concerns also weighed heavily. Fuel consumption limited deployment options. Specialized maintenance increased support requirements. Runway length restricted basing flexibility. Forward deployment became difficult. Operational planners saw limited adaptability. Integration challenges mounted. Safety concerns intensified throughout evaluation. Accident rates were considered unacceptable. Emergency handling margins remained narrow. Training pipelines became increasingly demanding. Risk exceeded perceived operational benefit. Confidence among leadership eroded steadily. Cancellation became easier to justify. Budget pressures accelerated the decision. Resources shifted toward fighters and strategic bombers. Experimental tactical aircraft lost priority. Programs without clear doctrine support suffered. 
the XB51 fit that category. Funding declined rapidly. Cancellation followed quietly. Despite termination, the aircraft was not considered a failure internally. Its data shaped future design philosophies. Engineers applied lessons to later programs. Innovation often involves sacrifice. The XB-51 paid that cost. Knowledge moved forward regardless. Progress rarely follows a straight path. The cancellation reflected timing more than capability. The aircraft arrived between eras. Jet technology outpaced operational thinking. Doctrine failed to absorb innovation quickly. The XB-51 became a casualty of transition. Many experimental aircraft share this fate. History later reassessed its value. The Martin XB-51 remains one of the most unconventional jet bombers ever built. Its design reflected a transitional moment in aviation history. Jet propulsion advanced faster than bomber doctrine. Engineers explored radical configurations aggressively. Not every concept survived evaluation. The XB-51 represents that experimental phase clearly. Its form reflected unanswered questions. Its emphasis on speed influenced later strike aircraft. Low-level penetration became an accepted tactic. Survivability shifted away from armor and gun turrets. Performance became a defensive tool. Lessons informed la T tactical bombes. Design philosophy continued evolving. The XB-51 contributed indirectly to that evolution. The aircraft demonstrated the dangers of extreme specialization. Narrow mission focus limited adaptability. Strategic shifts rendered it obsolete quickly. Balance proved more valuable than peak performance. This lesson shaped future procurement decisions. Designers favored flexibility thereafter. The industry adjusted accordingly. Pilots who flew the aircraft remembered it vividly. It demanded constant attention and respect. Few aircraft behaved similarly at the time. Its reputation endured despite limited service. Test pilots valued its honesty. The aircraft punished mistakes immediately. That trait left an impression. Only prototypes were ever completed. No operational squadrons followed. Yet the program was not erased. Museums and archives preserve its story. Engineers continue studying its choices. Aviation history values such boundary-pushing designs. Their influence persists quietly. The XB-51 was never intended to define an era. It was built to explore possibilities. In doing so, it revealed both promise and limitation. Aviation advanced because of such experiments. Operational success is not the only metric. Knowledge gained often matters more. The aircraft fulfilled that role. The Martin XB-51 stands as a reminder of aviation's learning curve. Innovation requires risk and acceptance of failure. Speed alone does not ensure success. Context ultimately defines viability. Design must align with doctrine. When it does not, even brilliance can fade. The XB-51's legacy lies in that lesson.